Ecclesiastes chapter 4. This was um, what I believe God had laid on my heart for this morning. I appreciate uh, forbearing with me. Uh, I guess, and I and I know, I know a couple, couple other preachers who've told me that they uh, deal with depression and anxiety. One has been dealing with it for a few years now, um, and ever since he had, he found out that he had a man and a wife in his church that I mean were devils, devils, and practicing stuff. And it was one of his good right-hand men that po was posing. And he said it, it had such an impact on him that it left emotional scars in him. And he struggles to this day with it. Another pastor came up to me after I had given my testimony about that uh, down in Arkansas. And he said, since he's had COVID, he's dealt with that. He struggled with it, with depression and anxiety. And to anybody who's ever had to deal with that, um, I've, I've heard and heard this all my life. Well, you must, there must be a devil. And let's cast that, that, we must cast that out. Or there must be some sin in your life. Or there's something wrong with you. And um, I've never really been one of these that says, you know, maybe there could be a physical, physiological problem. The human brain is an organ of your body, just like your finger, your lungs, your heart, your stomach, your, your hormonal system, everything. And sometimes stuff doesn't work quite right. Now, if it's the heart, it has symptoms. There are symptoms that something in the heart is not working right. And when doctors hear the symptoms, then they know what tests to do. When it comes to the human mind and our brain and something not quite right there, um, the first thing that some people, and I'm, you know, I'm going to say that they're well-meaning, but the first thing they want to do is cast it out. It's obviously a devil. It's got to be a devil. And we're going to cast that out and that's going to be the end of your problem. And, and don't get me wrong. I absolutely believe that devils can, can put fear in you. That dream I had a few weeks ago, there is no doubt in my mind that a devil was manifesting itself in that dream that I had. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. Uh, but I also believe that the, the human brain is an organ and sometimes physiologically things don't quite work right. Um, you know, we've had people that uh, they've stopped coming, but for years we entertained people from a group home who for various reasons had problems and issues with how their mind worked. And uh, we didn't try to cast devils out of them. There was just something there. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe it was something from birth, a genetic thing or whatever. But we loved them just the same and ministered to them the whole time they were here. I was uh, fortunate to uh, preach the funerals of two of them. Eddie was my favorite. I loved Eddie. And uh, I loved Frank. When we lost Frank, that was that was hard. Uh, so anyway, uh, it, if you if you are one of those who has ever suffered from anxiety, depression related issues, uh, I'm your friend. I am. I I believe um, that God could heal you if He wanted to, and there's nothing wrong with asking. But God may just leave that there. 
just to keep us humble, to keep us on our knees. Jody, you had something to say? Yeah. I read a verse, and I could not right now tell you where it is to save my life. But I read it, I must have read it early this morning because I woke up early. When I wake up early, I'll, I'll read my Bible. But it specifically said that God put fear in me. And I think, and I think God does that. I think God, every now and then, will allow you, will allow a devil to work on you to teach you how to fight, to teach you how to know warfare, to teach you to rely upon Him, to keep us from getting... You know, I, here it was, I prayed last Wednesday night, did I not ask you guys to help me pray that I don't get full of pride? Uh, so, thank you God. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, uh, this has been on my mind. I, I'm studying, eventually... To do a, a series of uh, messages on Sunday morning on prayer. And the more I think about it and ponder, ponder it, there is so much there in the Bible dealing with prayer. And prayer is, the if, if you want to use the word quintessential, it is the one thing that we do. If we don't do anything else, we pray. And we're supposed to pray. And there's so much in the Bible about prayer. But one thing that I know absolutely for sure and for certain is that God made sure to make it easy. Not difficult. If you're going to call upon Him and you need help, who between you and God, who's the adult in the room? Okay? It would be like a hunter telling Matthew, Daddy, I'm hungry. I want bacon, eggs, sausage. I want some pancakes. Huh? Okay? And then him, and then hunter telling you, Dad, you have the heat too high on the skillet. You need to turn it down just a little bit. And by the way, the way you're flipping those, not quite right. You need to do it a little bit like this. Matthew learned it from me. Okay? He knows how to do it. He's the adult in the room. And I think with prayer, you let God be the adult in the room. I think you let God figure out how to do everything. And he'll do it, I promise you. All right, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. This has been on my heart. Uh, verse 9, Ecclesiastes 4, 9. There are two are better than one. Uh, this is why you should wear both a belt and suspenders. Right? For they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. See what I'm saying? Yes, we're talking about Roy with his belt and suspenders. But woe to him that is alone when he faileth, when he, when he falleth. Woe to him when he's alone when he's falleth. Let me just stop here for a minute. Secret sins. Secret sins. They are different things to different people. But because of the very nature that they are secret, woe to those who do them because you're alone. There's a woe here. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. 
Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. That's where the expression a three dog night comes from. What's a three dog night, Matthew? Hmm? It means you, you let all three dogs sleep up in the bed because that bed's going to be warm that night. You need all three of them to stay on that bed. Okay? If two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now I want you to ponder that. Let's pray. Father, bless this message. And Lord, just bless the hearer of it. Use it, Father, however you desire to in whoever's life. Lord, it doesn't matter to me how you do it, what you do. Lord, as long as it's you doing it and it's not me. Lord, we thank you, God, for being the adult in the room. We thank you, God, for being the smart one who knows how to do everything. Father, we don't have to spell it out. We don't have to detail it to you. We don't have to uh, tell you how to do everything. You already have a plan, and we do thank you for that plan. We pray, Lord, you just bless tonight. Bless this message, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Now... Just for a minute, I'm going to bring in something I learned from Freemasonry, studying Freemasonry. They have in the in the what's called the Blue Lodge, which is the first three degrees. If you've ever heard the phrase, man, he's given me the third degree. Uh, it's because in the third degree, there is a lot of, they, they give you a lot of questions that you must answer. And um, part of the ritual of the third degree requires what's called the use of a cable toe. And what it is, it is a three-fold cord or rope. And it's wrapped around the neck of a man who presents himself to the lodge. He represents in the occult, he represents the hanged man. And I want you to think about that. Cursed is anyone who hangeth from a tree. Now, I pondered that one day and I was looking at it and I thought, well, what's the significance of the of the cable toe, the three the three fold cord in relation to this? And I, I immediately thought of whenever I see that number three, there's several things in here. We have the father. We're going to get to those in a minute. But Genesis chapter three turn there. Remember, the, the point of this is a threefold cord is not, let's, what, it, what does it say? Not quickly broken. Threefold cord. Now watch this. Genesis 3, right there, God's given us a clue. When we find out how the serpent beguiled Eve, he, defiled, he beguiled her three different ways. And when she began to look at the fruit, the fruit took on three different forms in her mind. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Number one, he is doubting God's word. He wants you to doubt God's word. He wants you to... Now let me say this. I was going to say he wants you to question God's word. God does not have a problem with you asking him question after question after question after question, including you saying, God, I, I, had, I have a problem with this. Help me. Remember the disciples, they went to Jesus and they said, Lord, help, help our, unbel our unbelief. Lord, increase our faith. 
In other words, there's nothing wrong with you going to God and asking God, God, I want to believe more. I want to, I want to be faithful more. And I don't want it to just appear that I'm doing it that way. I want it to be in my heart. When it's in my heart, it's, I know it's not going anywhere. The heart, once something is locked in there, it's locked in there. So God, increase my faith. Teach me how to be more faithful. Teach me how to trust you more. Teach me how to, how to know you more. How to recognize what you're doing more. When things are going on around my life, I want to know the Bible so much that... When something happens, I can instantly hear scripture in my mind. I want to hear the Holy Ghost quoting verses of Bible in my mind and in my heart to, to teach me, to lead me as I go. So the first thing he did was doubt God's word, question God's word. And of course, the woman said unto the serpent, verse 2, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, and God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. That's the second thing he did. Directly contradicted God's word. Directly lied through his teeth. His dangerous forked teeth. He lied through them. For God doth... And now watch this now. For God doth know. Here's, here's number three. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Three things that he, that he did here to Eve. Now go back to that verse again. If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Eve was not capable of breaking this cord of bondage that Satan had wrapped her up in. Had it just been one thread, might have been, might have been pretty easy. As he uses the second thread, might have been more difficult but possible. But now he's used three as a, as a cord, a rope, a type of bondage to tie her up. And in her mind, she could not reason it out of her mind. It was already there. The threefold cord had brought her mind and her heart under bondage. And it could not easily be broken by her. So what does any good wife do when she's got something she needs broken and she can't do it herself? John, cut this, break this, right? Mike, do this. Matthew, break this, open this. Huh? Kill that. Oh, here, here's my favorite. Taste that and see if it's any good. Yeah, that's a good one. Honey, I tasted that five minutes ago. Eat it, eat away. Three things. He wrapped her in a threefold cord, did he not? Now look at what happened. When the women saw that the tree was good for food, boom, number one. That it was pleasant to the eyes, boom, number two. And a tree to be desired to make one wise, boom, number three. She put herself in her own bondage. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. That threefold cord of sin. And I want you to pay attention to this now and I'm not going to dwell on this very long. But a threefold cord of sin is not easily broken, is it? Which is why the devil loves to take Hunter here. How old is he? Five. 
as young as five. Hi, buddy. I said your name. He went boing. As young as five years old. I can remember as young as five years old, the devil setting me up for sins that were coming down the road. He was binding me up in a threefold cord that even over time and as I gained physical strength, I was not able to break those cords. What did Delilah do? In fact, let's do this. Turn to, turn to uh, where is that? Judges chapter 16. Turn to Judges 16. Let's look at what she did, how she did it. Her, remember who she is. She's not Butch. She's Delilah. And we know Sam, uh, Samson had one weakness. And it was the ladies. He, had an, he was like Solomon. For all that God had done for him, he had an eye for the ladies. You can be a mighty man of God. You can be a mighty man for God. You can be a preacher, a deacon. You can be a lay minister. You can be whatever it is. Mighty man for God, but have a weakness. And the devil will use it every time. Oh, let's see here. Judges chapter 16. Let's look at it. And, uh, let's see here. Verse 4, it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sork whose name was Delilah. See, isn't that smoother than butter? Isn't that, isn't that name just roll off? What's your name, baby? Delilah. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. Um, look at verse 6. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thou great strength lieth, wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green widths that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Well, that was the first one. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green widths which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait abiding with her in the chamber and she said unto him the Philistines be upon thee Samson he break the with as a thread of tow remember that word cable tow that I just read is broken when it touched the fire so his strength was not known but Delilah said unto Samson behold thou hast mocked me and told me lies now tell me I pray thee wherewith thou mightest be bound number two and he said unto her if they bind me fast with new ropes that were never were occupied then shall I be weak in the, as another man. That's number two. Then Delilah took therefore new ropes and bound him with therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the... If I was one of these Philistine soldiers, after I'd seen the first one, I'd be going, I'm not volunteering for the second one. Why would I? And he break them from off his arms like a thread. Delilah said unto Samson, Hereto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pen and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. And she said, That's a third one. She said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times. And hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words, <coughs> excuse me, and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. She's going to do it one more time. Wimber always tell you about four. One of them's always different. The fourth one's going to work. 
Then he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. I shall, if I find be shaven, that my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Four. Boom. The, the threefold cord that Delilah was trying to bind Samson with was the setup to get him to fall from the grace and the power and the strength that God had given him. And when it came time for that fourth one, that fourth one's always different than the other three in the Bible. He finally told her the truth and they ended up gouging his eyeballs out as a result of it. Okay? they Because she put him to sleep they came in and shaved off the seven locks. The seven locks are like the seven horns on the lamb in Revelation chapter 5, which are the seven spirits of God. The spirit of God has left him, therefore his strength is gone from him. And I'm telling you, the devil will try to wrap you up in his threefold cord, which is not easily broken. Don't let, please, I beg you, beg you, beg you, beg you. Don't let anybody on the internet or on television or in any books try to convince you that you can stop sinning all on your own if you just do this or do that or do that or do that. I remember a young man that used to come to this church used to be a Mormon. He told me, he said, uh, I, I believe that if I just, he was unmarried at the time, and he said, I believe if I just refrain myself for 14 days, then that just goes away from me and I will never have another lustful thought. And I said, try it. Try it. He said, you don't think it'll work? I said, all I said was try it. You know, he never came back to me after 14 days and said, it worked! It doesn't. He was thinking that the threefold cord that the devil had bound him up in could be easily broken if he performed a certain act like refraining for 14 days or whatever. He believed this. Somebody, and he got it from one of his former Mormon friends. Lied through his teeth. That threefold cord is never easily broken. It takes Christ to set the captives free. Amen. Now, 2 Corinthians 2, 17. We're not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God. In the sight of God speak we in Christ. Here's, an here's another set of cords. Here's another three-fold cord. That is not easily broken. The first one we dealt with obviously dealt with sin. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. None of those go away from you until you drop dead at the end of your life. So now here's the second one. 2 Corinthians 2.17 We're not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Well, here's one thread. Corrupting the word of God. And I hope that if there's anything that I can do for you in, in, in everything that I do, it is to reassure you constantly that your Bible is never wrong. Never wrong. Men have corrupted it. But we still have it. And it's never wrong. 
1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. There's a second chord. What corrupts good manners? Evil communications. What, what are evil communications? Give me examples. Huh? Facebook, Twitter. Facebook, Twitter. Boy, that became very clear to us when Jack Dorsey decided to commit what I think was at best a very unpatriotic act by censoring the President of the United States. This is a land where people can write on a t-shirt, I am a transgendered, homosexual, queer, lesbian, gay, bisexual pervert. And wear that in public and nothing can be done against them. And yet he censored the President of the United States of America. There's something wrong there. That's evil communications. And what do they do? They corrupt good manners. I'm going to release, I, I did the recording, I haven't done the editing yet, I've been too busy. But I released, I'm going to release, uh, I'm going to go home and edit it tonight. It'll take all night to render and get it posted. But I'm dealing with the, the moon turning to blood or the moon being darkened in Matthew 24. Who remembers the books and the, and the big hoopla about the four red moons that were going to start the great tribulation? and John Hagee. Huh? John Hagee. John Hagee. That was 2014 and 2015. What happened? Nada. Zero. Zilch. Nothing. And I had a family member who is a Christian. And they came to me and asked me that. What, Mike, what do you think about those four red moons? And I said, if you want my honest opinion, I think they're a bunch of... Hooey, I think it's a pack of lies. I don't think that they're, that they're interpreting the scriptures correctly. And I said, I would not waste my time buying the books, watching the videos. I would not. And obviously she had. She said, really? And I said, I'll tell you what, call me in a year. When all of this blows over and nothing happens... Call me. If I'm wrong, I'll call you and I'll apologize to you. And I said, I will apologize publicly to you. I said, but I think it's made up to make this, whoever's writing these books, a bunch of money. Whoever's making the videos, they're making a ton of money. I said, I guarantee you that's what it is. Exactly right. Okay. That's part of the threefold cord. Here's another one. 2 Timothy 4.4 4, They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. These goes with that. Titus 1.14 Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. 2 Peter 1.16 For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. So here we have Number one, we're not as many which corrupt the word of God. Number two, evil communications corrupt good manners. Number three, don't follow fables. That is a threefold cord that has put more people in bondage. More, how can I put this? Church members? Because I don't believe all church members are saved. He's got to keep one hand up, my Matthew. If he's going to ride a bull, he's got to keep, he's got to keep one hand up, all right? Believe it or not, I used to do the same thing with Matthew. We'd come home to church on Sunday night and we'd turn on PBR, bull riding. And I'd get Matthew on my leg and I would just go to whopping and whooping and whopping and whooping and trying to get him to go off. And I said, Matthew, keep that, keep that hand up. You got to keep that hand up. But anyway, threefold cord of lies, deceitfulness, corruption, which 
once they're there, they are hard to break out of. People, people falling for the flat earth nonsense. People falling for the Mandela effect. People falling for the blood moons. People falling for the Hebrew roots. People falling for one lie after another. And all of them have come from the internet. All of them have. Years ago, the poor Jehovah's Witness and the Mormons and everybody else, they had it so difficult to share their false doctrine because they had to go house to house and try to explain it to everybody. Now all they got to do is slick it up, put it on a video, add some nice graphics to it, and you get people pulled in hook, line, and sinker. One lady, one lady wrote to me and she said, Pastor Mike, I've been watching your videos for years. I'm a great supporter of your ministry. She said, I am convinced that Paul was a false apostle. And I went, oh no. And I read, I quoted her some scriptures. And you know, the way, I don't remember how she wrote me back, but I could tell that, okay, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I could tell that she was going Hebrew roots. Those threefold cords were not easily broken. Now, on the, on the good side, however, we have 1 John chapter 5, verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are what? When you take three threads and twine them together to make one cord, that cord, I'm telling you, is not easily broken. If somebody came to you tonight after church, Facebook Messenger, uh, Twitter, text message, email, whatever, and say, did you know that the early church never believed in a trinity? It was a set up doctrine. It was made up by men. There really isn't anything in the Bible that says that there, that God is, there's, what do you believe in? Three gods? They'll, they'll throw that at you. And did you know that some people will fall for that? But if you allow God the Father, God the Word, God the Holy Ghost to be united in your heart. Nobody can just come up to you and say, well, you don't believe in that Trinity doctrine, do you? And all I do is quote scripture. I believe that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Believe it or not, we have a follower that follows us and he, uh, apparently he was talking to a friend of his who said, and he was trying to witness to him, and he said, you know, that Bible is all written by men, it's all made up, and, and Adam and Eve, that, that story about Adam and Eve in the Bible, about them being the first people on the earth, and that's how it got populated, that's a bunch of hooey. And the guy said, well, why don't you, here's the number of a guy you can call. So he called here. Paige took the call. And initially, he didn't get anywhere, and, he, and the phone got disconnected somehow. That's what, we, that's what we were told. I don't know if he hung up on her or what. But he called back. He said, I got to speak to Mike Hoggart. So she called up, and she said, this guy said he's got to speak to Mike Hoggart. I said, okay. So I got on the phone, and he said, uh, yes, sir, he said, uh, I'm having a conversation with a man. I just want to know what you believe. Do you believe that Adam and Eve were the first people that God made? He put them on the earth and uh, everybody else came from Adam and Eve. I, and I quoted scripture. And he said, okay, that's all I want to know. Have a good day. Click. Then the guy that, and I knew the guy that, that was trying to talk to him. He told me the story. He said, this guy thinks the Bible is all written by men and all a bunch of nonsense. 
See, he had a threefold cord of the corruption of the word of God that held him in bondage and it kept him from believing the threefold cord that there is one God who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He didn't believe it. And then there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And if you'll get that and wrap that around your heart, that threefold cord will not easily be broken. Now, how about this one? How about this threefold cord? These are not easily broken, my friend. Number one, 1 Timothy 2, 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Prayer is a cord. Hebrews 10, 24. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Church attendance, the attendance to come into the house of God to be with those who believe the Bible and are of like mind as you. I'm telling you, is essential. It's another it's part of a threefold cord. The third one is study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So what do we have here? We have number one, the cord of prayer. Number two, the cord of not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And number three, the cord of studying God's Word. And those three working together as one, I guarantee you the devil will not figure out a way to break that cord. He'll try. He'll try. But it's not easily broken. Especially the more times you wrap yourself up in it. You just keep going. Keep wrapping. You're not going anywhere. God's not going to let you go. Here's another one. Genesis chapter 2. Turn there. In fact, that's, that's the last one. Now, I'm going to say this in a time when godly manhood is under attack in such a way that we've never seen before. The four orphans, and it's not just an American problem. The four orphans that we took in. Their father had died first. We don't know exactly how, I don't think. But then their mother died of a drug overdose. In Turkana, Kenya. You wouldn't think there'd be a drug problem up there. There's a drug problem. There's a drug problem in, everywhere. There's drug problems in um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Amish villages. Amish communities, there's drug problems. And I can tell you why. For the most part, those people are not born again. They have a very outward appearance of godliness. But inwardly, they're not changed. They're not saved. Uh, is Michaela here? We took Michaela on a horse and buggy ride, Amish County in, in Ohio, second largest Amish community in the country. And I sat up in the front seat with that man. And after talking to him for probably 20, 30 minutes, however long the ride was, I knew in my heart that man knew that much about what was in the Bible. 
And he had, but he had the beard correct, and he had the suspenders on. And believe it or not, um, different Amish communities have rules regarding the male suspenders and how they're supposed to be on. Whether they're supposed to be crossed in the back or not crossed in the back, and where, how many buttons. Just believe it or not, that's their salvation. Their salvation is tied up in bonnets and trousers and the outward appearance and everything else. Their salvation is tied up in that. But they have no real salvation. You pray for them. First time I ever went to Reg Kelly's church, there was a man and a woman sitting there with several children and the woman had a bonnet on. I thought, well, she didn't come here just to hear me, did she? And Reg told me the story. That man started reading the Bible to his family. English King James Bible. They started reading the Bible. And they realized that there was, there was not a word in there about how his trousers had to be on right and how his suspenders had to be this a certain way. They said there was nothing in there about that. But that's what they were told that they would be saved by. And he said he got saved, him and his family got saved in the Mennonite church. Run them out. He said, get out of here. They said, we love the lifestyle. And they kept living the lifestyle even after being put out of their church. She still wore the bonnet to church and everything like that. He still wore the suspenders. But he said, the people that I left were lost. So Genesis 2, verse 18. The Lord God said... It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make an help meet for him. One of the, and I never really understood this. I, I, I never really thought of it this way. But I can't remember who I was talking to. Brady or Bradley, one of the two. But they, they brought it up and they, and they said it this way. And I think I agree with it. Qualifications for a bishop is that he is to be the husband of one wife. Said nothing about him allowing him to be single said he was to be the husband of one wife and and I think I agree with that I think a bishop should be because then it later on it says he is to rule his house well if there's no wife and children in that house how, how can he rule it well means he's supposed to do a good he's not supposed to be a tyrant he's supposed to do a good job of it of raising his children he's supposed to do it well but anyway now to the ground the lord god formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them under the ad brought them unto adam to see what he would call them and whatsoever adam called every living creature that was the name thereof and adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to the every beast of the field but for Adam there was not found in help meat for him. And the Lord God raised a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked. And the man and his wife. And were not ashamed. You see I think the threefold cord here is family. A husband. A wife. And at least one child. Or however many God blesses you with. Now to you ladies whose husbands have gone for whatever reason, Christ can fill in the gap. And He does. And he does it very, very well. We had a lady here years ago. I loved her to death. Her name was Patty, I think. And she was single. And where she worked, and they knew that she had been dating around. And one of the gals said, Patty, what, who's the new man in your life? And she never even hesitated. She said, Jesus, and he's wonderful. And I always thought that was awesome. But let me tell you something. God designed human nature. And God is a better 
better scientists at civics and civic responsibility and communities and how people interact with one another. And I'm telling you, the devil knows this as well. The devil knows if he can break the threefold cord of family, he will destroy that nation. Now, how many of you recognize that as being absolutely true? So I say to all the men here and online, you're the anchor that ties all of that together. You're the, you're the foremost cord in that. You're the foremost thread in that. The devil will go after you first every single time. Because once he breaks the cords of Bible reading, church attendance, prayer out of your life, he will absolutely destroy your family because you've become now so weak that you can, you're easily moved out of the way and the real target is not you, it's your wife and kids. That's, that's the real target. That threefold cord of family, man, woman, child, that lady with that t-shirt knows nothing of what she's saying. She's a 20-year-old hippie wannabe that wants to tell society what the new rules are and how much better off we're going to be if we'll just let children choose their own gender. Shoot. Malachi has had a car in his hand since he was old enough to grasp things. Not a Barbie. Not a dress. A car. He knows what gender he is. At his age, he knows what gender he is. And I'm just telling you, that's the devil's plan is to break that three-fold cord of family. And he's doing it. He's doing it very well. You young people, don't separate yourself. Even when you get to the age to where you, you can be on your own now, fine, that's fine. Move out, get on your own, start your own life, that's great. But you still have a mom and dad. You still have parents that love you. That threefold cord, you're going to find out just how strong that cord really is when it comes to times that get rough. Can I get an amen out of some old people? I thought my parents were the stupidest. I thought, how do people who have that little brain matter even breathe? How can they even think to breathe? Until Chris, one day, my car broke down. Highway 55 and Imperial. And I called my daddy. Daddy, what should I do? Well, son, I can't help you. You know what he was doing? He was making me be a man. I knew exactly what he was doing. Son, I'm not bailing you out. You figure it out. And what it was, the thermostat was sticking. So I had to drive a little bit, pull over, find somebody who I could borrow their water hose, put cold water in there, and run it for a while until it got so hot it couldn't take it. I'd find somebody else and let me borrow their water hose, put cool water in it. Then I figured out how you could take that out and loosen that up. But my dad was being wise. Son, figure it out. Let's stand to our feet.